Bill Sanford and his wife Paula moved to Epworth Villa in January of 2022. Bill has known about Epworth Villa since uh, its very beginning because he was an executive with uh, Bank First. Bank First has been very involved and interested in uh, Epworth Villa since it was it, since its inception, and it continues to be a vital part of uh, our Epworth community still. So uh, it was probably not surprising or necessarily a hard choice for Bill and Paula when they were deciding to go to a senior center that Epworth Villa was on the top of their list. Bill has had a very busy and a very interesting life. So let's get to it. Bill, talk about your early life, where you were raised and, and where you went to school. Well, I was born in Lindsay, Oklahoma. And when I was four years old, my mother and I moved to Oklahoma City and uh, where I attended grade school at Gatewood, junior high at Taft, and, and high school at Northwest Classen. I was in the first graduating class of Northwest Classen in 1956. Um, I was raised primarily by my mother and by aunt, and uh, because my mother and, and, and father separate, got a divorce when I was an infant, and I never really knew much about him. Um, interesting thing about my mom is when she did, when we moved here, it was during the war, World War II, and she got a job as a Rosie, Rosie the Riveter on the airplanes out at uh, Will Rogers Field, which at that time was a military establishment, as well as where the, the, the airport is. But uh, Rosie the Riveter the, 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 were really famous during the war because uh, these ladies worked on airplanes that kept us in the war. They, uh, they learned how to work on them and they were all over the airplanes and everything, so it was interesting. Well, did they get training in how to do, I mean, she didn't necessarily go there with a no. lot of previous training on how no. to. They, they taught them everything about what to do, and it was primarily, as it says, the Riveter, you were, you were drilling into these, the, the airplanes, the, end of the uh, 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 wings and, and, the, and the fuselage, uh, of just putting them together. Yeah. And now I don't know that it was how big the airplanes were, but, but you can look it up, and they were very, they were all over the country. Well, we could see um, from the movies, you know, kind of what size those planes were there right. in the war. So how long did she do that? I, I think it was only about six months to a year, and then she got a job with uh, the VA uh, hospital as an administration, in, in administration, and eventually she ended up working at FAA for a long time mm -hmm. during her life. So do you have siblings? I had one sister who passed away a year ago. She was a really neat lady and uh, uh, she, she was in her 90s, is that correct? She was 92 when she passed away. Oh, wow. Well, Bill, um, after high school, uh, you went to college. There was uh, the Navy, law school, marriage, children. So let, first, let's talk about uh, where you did go to college. I went to Oklahoma City University College and graduated with a degree in business in uh, 1961. I had already uh, applied to go into the Navy, and so I went directly into the Navy, and eventually I was uh, aboard, assigned aboard a uh, destroyer, the USS Kepler, I'll never forget that name. And uh, that was a great experience for me because it was really the first time I had spent any time out of Oklahoma and I met a lot of people, obviously, and still have some contact with mm. some of those people that I met in the Navy. Uh, it teaches you a lot about life to, uh, to do that. And, uh, but I was lucky to get out of the Navy a little early in order to go back to law school, or go to law school. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I, I, I went to law school in 1964 uh, at Oklahoma City University, uh, it's at night, and uh, we got married the same year, Paula and I, so she kind of had to put up with me being gone Monday, Wednesday, and Friday every week 
from six to nine to law school, and she took care of the kids and everything because we started having children mm -hmm. then. So you uh, did you know uh, Paula before you were going to law school, or where did you? Yes, go? we met on a blind date. A friend of ours, uh, of hers and mine, set us up for a blind date uh, during the Christmas holiday when we were both in college. In fact, it was it was the uh, uh, at the time that I had graduated and she was in college and uh, over Christmas. So we kind of hit it off with each other then and maintained a relationship uh, of writing each other uh, while I was in the Navy. And well, you did have, uh, and you did have your first child when you were in law school, but you have three. Yes. Three boys. Three boys. And uh, one of them, uh, well, they were all born in Oklahoma City, and uh, we also have three grandchildren. So what, what are your son's names? Uh, the oldest is Chad. Uh, the middle son, his name is Todd. And uh, the youngest is Scott. Chad, uh, Chad lives in Oklahoma City with his son, who is our, our grandson. Uh, and he's a, this, he's a student at Memorial High School in Edmond and he's also on the wrestling team. Uh, my second uh, middle son, Todd, uh, they lived in Olathe, Kansas. He went to college in Kansas, and that's where he met his wife. And then they have two children, and their son graduated from Kansas State University, and he is now a civil engineer with a company in uh, Marshalltown, Iowa. And my granddaughter, she will be a senior at the University of Arkansas this coming uh, year, this coming school year. Well, let's talk about uh, your subsequent employment after college and law school. When I was going to law school, I worked for a savings and loan uh, because it was the hours worked out good so I could do the work and, and, and go to law school. When I graduated from uh, uh, Oklahoma City University with a degree in law, I had contacted uh, some oil companies. I just thought maybe I might well have an interest in being a land man for an oil company, which they actually go out and try and lease property and handle the legal part of leasing mineral rights from the owner, landowners. And so I went to work for Skelly and, and um, they told me that they were going to move us to Corpus Christi, and which we did. And we really liked Corpus Christi. It was a kind of a fun place. We only lived about 10 minutes from the beach. We spent a lot of time there. Uh, we only had two of the boys then. And, uh, and so we were in, in Corpus for two years, and then they decided they wanted to close the office in, in, in Corpus Christi. You had kind of an interesting title for well, them. yeah, in addition to being an associate landman, I was a, what they call an oil scout. And an oil scout back then, uh, now this was in the late 60s, before computers and so forth, um, we went out two days a week and went on site of, of wells that were being drilled in our, oh, there was, it was about a 15 county area and in, in, in South Texas. And our job was to find out what the oil wells were doing at that time. They, they, they were mostly all being drilled, so they didn't know whether they were gonna have oil or, or gas or how much or what. But they had ways of determining what was down there uh, by different, different uh, things that they would put down into the hole. <clears throat> so anyway, that, uh, it was kind of fun because I would go out on Mondays and Tuesdays and, and go to different well sites. Sometimes they wouldn't let you on the site mm -hmm. because they, they wanted it a secret as to what they were doing. They didn't want you to know that at a certain level of 10,000 feet or 8,000 feet or whatever that they were finding some, some signs of oil in there. Because what we would do is what the information that we found we met on Wednesdays of each year, and I, when I say we, about 20 other oil and gas companies that had oil scouts, and we met in a hotel and exchanged information on all of these wells in this 15 county area. 
And then we took that information back to our office and gave it to our geologists and our seismograph people, and they started seeing if we should start looking to lease areas or even drill wells or so forth, which they might already have leases on. Well, it's much more complicated than uh, sticking a pump in the ground and just <laughs> yes. drilling that. All right, well, the banking business drew your interest. Well, yes, uh, when, I was at, when I was with Skelly Oil Company, they decided, as I said earlier, to close the office, and they said, well, we're going to transfer you to Banff, Canada. And my wife and I thought, well, that sounds kind of romantic, but then they came back and said, no, we're going to send you to the Denver office. And we thought, well, that's okay, because that was about the same distance from Oklahoma City, and so we could get back to visit, you know, family and so on. But then they came back and said, no, we're going to send you to Houston. And we just didn't want to go to Houston. It was hot, and, and, and we had been there, we'd visited there some, and, and so we decided... I contacted uh, the people I worked for before, and they said, yeah, come on back. We've got it. We want you to run a branch for us out here in Oklahoma City. So I went back to work for Oklahoma City Federal Savings and Loan. But I eventually started working with Liberty National Bank, which is where I really wanted to be in the first place. Because, number one, it was a great bank, and banks had a little bit more uh, pizzazz to them than savings and loan. Mm -hmm they could do more things and so forth legally in terms of the regulations. So I, I went to work for Liberty and was there about four years, five years, and then uh, uh, I was approached by a group of men that were uh, going to start a new bank and they wanted me to be the president of the bank. So uh, we did that. There were some pretty influential people that were in our board, uh, Neil McCaleb for one, Andy Coates, um, and so we had a, uh, we opened a bank called Memorial Bank on, on Broadway Extension and Memorial. We sold the bank in 1988, and the buyers uh, didn't, they wanted somebody else's president, so I was out of a job for a while. I got back into banking pretty quickly though, uh, eventually with uh, Bank First. And I was with Bank First for about 25 years and I was a commercial real estate lender, uh, making loans on uh, shopping centers, uh, hotels, uh, office buildings, and I really enjoyed that. That was that was really. And Epworth Villa was that involved in? We did call on Epworth Villa, and we did some some uh, some work with them, uh, and of course the branch that was open there. We talked about that when I was still with Bank First me and uh, myself and the president of the bank, David Harlow, and... Uh, you spent a couple of years on the Edmond School Board, and during that time, uh, you said there was a couple of uh, kind of controversial <coughs> issues. Yes, uh, in 1990 I was elected to, onto the uh, Edmond School Board. Uh, you were on, uh, were you on some other boards too, I think you I was on some other boards. The one that I enjoyed the most was the Arthritis Foundation Board. I was on that board for about 15 years, <clears throat> and the Arthritis Foundation was really very active in trying to educate people who had arthritis, who had real problems with arthritis. And maybe that's why I have it now, because I, I have some arthritis in my joints. But uh, It probably wasn't because you were on the board here. You're, you're living in a community where there are several people. <laughs> you're right. But uh, I really enjoyed that, that, and I feel like we did a, a good service for, yeah. the, for the city. There was a couple of other uh, uh, boards that I was on. I was on the Greater Oklahoma City Home Builders Board for a year because I did make loans to home builders to build houses. And uh, there was a few others, but... Uh, Let's talk about golf. <laughs> well, I love to play golf. I haven't been able to play any for the last few years because of my back. But uh, I was always uh, loved to play golf, and so did my three sons. And we, and there's nothing more fun than to play with your three sons around a golf. Who I does? Was, who are you all equally qualified or equally uh, adept? I guess. Is well, right. they can hit the ball a lot farther than me now. 
Uh, but we're all score about the same. We're mostly in the low 80s mm -hmm. when we're playing a lot. Oh, um, well, that's good. And uh, one of the things that I uh, that, was, that tickled my boys and us too was I was playing in a golf tournament at Oak Tree Country Club, and I was lucky enough to make a hole in one. And at those ter types of tournaments, they have prizes if you make a hole in one. <clears throat> and the prize was a brand new boat. It was a 22 foot regal boat. Really a nice boat. Nice prize. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, but we never got it in the water because Lake Arcadia hadn't opened yet. And we had two, two sons in college and we kind of thought, well, we might sell this boat. That'll help pay for college. So that's what we did is sell the boat. But uh, it was kind of funny when I did that because my boys, they really got a kick out of it. <laughs> they didn't want us to they sell didn't. it. Okay. <laughs> well, you and your sons have another favorite pastime besides uh, golf. We love, we love to go fly fishing uh, in Colorado. That's the only place we've been, although I'd like to go to others. But back in the 70s and 80s and, uh, and, and, the, and part of the 90s, we spent a fair amount of uh, time in the summer uh, fly fishing, and they all really took to that very quickly. Mm -hmm. And uh, fly fishing for trout in the streams of uh, around Crested Butte, Colorado. This is where we primarily did our fishing. Do you keep those fish, or do you? Well, sometimes them you back? do. Uh, in fact, we one at one. I remember one time that we caught about five or six. Now they're not very big. They're only about this size where we were fishing. So but, the ones you see on TV that are about this size. Oh, they, we didn't catch them <laughs> that big. Oh, maybe <laughs> they may not have been real even. <laughs> <laughs> but we did cook sometimes the fish that we mm -hmm. caught. We would grill them outside, but. Uh, well, they're good. I mean. Oh, it's wonderful. There's nothing better than a fresh, fresh trout. Yeah, yeah for, for sure. Well, you've known about Epworth since it was built. So, uh, as I said, it was perhaps not surprising that it was high on your list when you moved. So, tell me now what pleases you after you moved here? Is there something that really pleases you that you well, didn't expect? Well, what we really have, from the very beginning, is the friendliness among all the residents. And the, and, and, and the fact that, I think these name tags are a great thing, because that way you can kind of put a name with a face. but. What we really enjoyed is meeting a lot of people, new people that we didn't know. And there were some people that we already had a relationship with that are here. So that's part of the what we really enjoy about Epworth Villa. Obviously we did this because the house we were living in, we had been in for 40 years. We had had it built. It was too big for us now and we needed to downsize and so that's the reason that we decided to look around and we didn't have to look very far because we were both somewhat familiar with uh, Epworth Villa. Uh, Paula knew a couple of the members of the trust, the board here. So it was a fairly easy decision for us to make. Well Bill, and we're just very happy to call you and Paula our friends and our uh, neighbors. We're so very happy that you're a part of uh, this community. We appreciate your story and we thank you very much for being here. Well, thank you, Marilyn. I enjoyed it. Thanks.